Uh, the last thing that, to talk about and just to maybe be aware of, so tension-free body, vocal support, placement, projection comes from the vocal support, yeah? And then the last one is how our voices resonate. Um, so the way that our voices resonate within our bodies, and literally the whole body is a resonating source, is that those little vibrations that go out uh, bounce off the hard surfaces within our body and then once they get in our body, outside of our body. Uh, those hard surfaces are called, the those empty spaces between them are called the resonators. So again, any place that a sound vibration can go hit off of ricochet, naturally the sound wave gets bigger so it amplifies. Okay? So we have dominant resonators in our bodies. Uh, one is the chest. So here, can you hear the chest? Oh yeah, mm, when we hum, we've got that, mm, the chest resonator. Yeah. Uh, if you listen to NPR, you know, we also, we know we have the pharynx. The pharynx is a big resonator. That's so severely soft. So, oh, yes, yes, yes. I know what you're saying. Yeah. So pharynx resonator. Yeah. Uh, and then once we start to come up, uh, or if you've been like smoking Lucky Strike since prenatal years, you have the, 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 the throat resonator. Yeah. That's a really dangerous one. We don't want to ever use that. So if you hear that quality in your voice, you want to try to come out of the throat, get rid of that throaty sound. Uh, so you're using more chest. Um, but chest is kind of like the bass on a stereo. And you know, if you just listen to a song with all bass, boom, boom, it sounds crappy. We want to equalize it, right? So we've got some mid range and some high range. So our mid ranges happen in here in the mask. This is really bringing the, the voice forward into uh, here, like the front of the mouth. So this is the, in the New York thing. Yeah, you've got that, that Brooklyn, that mask thing. Yeah. Or if I want to open it up a little bit more, I can go into the sinuses. So then I just open it and you get a little more of the sinuses up into the cheeks here. But again, it adds a little mid-tone range, yeah, brightness-wise. Uh, and then if those vibrations get sent to the wrong place, then they can get into the nasal spot. So we want to make sure that we don't, because again, this is a totally legitimate resonator in terms of vocal health, but our culture deems it nerdy and lack of power, and we have a negative connotation with it. So if I'm putting my vocal vibrations there, I want to learn how to put them in different resonator spaces. And then the last major dominant one is the, the head voice. Yeah, oh, up here, Mickey Mouse. So those are our major resonators. So you want to identify what is your dominant resonator, and then do I need to add some mid-tones or some high-tones so that what's coming out has all those varieties. Uh, the last thing I want to make sure that we cover collectively, though, uh, before we run out of time, is this idea of, of just the very simple, I'm walking to class, I'm about to go lecture for two hours, yeah? Which, to use the analogy, that's like I'm going to do my sprint if I'm a runner. So I don't know any runner who would just walk up to the track, hear the shot, and take off, right? No, they're going to spend 10, 15 minutes or whatever they need to to stretch. So if I'm walking across campus, I'm just doing a gentle hmm. a nice little soft hum to start to stretch those muscles out. Yeah? So that they are lubricated, they're warm, they're stretched, they have, you know, they're flexible to go in and do the sprint, the lecture. Uh, and then if you, or if you're in your office, you just have to go across the hall, then you can take that into a little like, hmm, oh, and some sirens. Okay? Uh, you want to start on what's known as your median pitch your median pitch. All of us have them. It's wherever we feel most comfortable with our voices. Uh, and here's a great little trick I love that I learned. Uh, you know when you're on the phone and you're talking to like your mom or a friend and they keep talking you just go like, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Hear how that's the same, the uh-huh is the same note every time? That's our natural median pitch. So, uh-huh. So to find it, we're going to go like this. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. That's my pitch for walking to my class to warm my voice up. And then very gently, you just continue the hum, but you just start to open your lips a little bit more. And then you open your lips more and more. And you drop your jaw. And you have a big, wide open mouth. And then your voice is just naturally warming up. 
And from there, that might be enough. If, though, you really want to warm it up, like if you've got a big sprint to run, an eight-hour day, boy, I would spend a little time. All you're doing then is like stretching the muscles a little more. So you take your median pitch that you just learned, and then you just simply start to drop it a note lower, and then a note above it, then a couple of notes below it, and then a couple of notes above it. And you just start doing what we call sirens. You're just warming up more of your vocal range to make sure you're ready to run your sprint.